for this first session. So uh, I'll be actually co-presenting with uh, Jason Hurd. Uh, Jason, if you want to say a few words about yourself. Sure, hi everyone, uh, Jason Hurd. Uh, so I run our uh, analytics and, and database group at SAP. Uh, you know, glad everyone joins today uh, and looking forward to a great day. I actually started at Business Objects back in the uh, version six days back in the early 2000s. So uh, glad everyone's here today and uh, hope to make this as educational as possible. And thanks Bruno as always for uh, leading and organizing our user group within public sector. Thanks Jason. So uh, here on this first slide, what we want to show, actually these were all the business object versions up to uh, 4.3 actually here. And so uh, you can really see things start actually with uh, version six. So just here, actually there are fun uh, facts about the whole history of business objects. Uh, so initially, of course, you've got Crystal. Crystal actually is rather popular in the public sector because back in the days, uh, Crystal was going to visit agencies and giving them actually CD-ROMs at the time with Crystal uh, inside. and. Uh, people actually could use Crystal, do reports, and that's actually how uh, Crystal got pretty popular in the in the public sector. And of course, over the years, it's stayed very popular because uh, you've got that pixel perfect capability that you also have in uh, uh, Webby today. But that's that was a core strength of uh, Crystal. And then after that, uh, the funny story was in these days it was a big. Um, uh, th th there were a lot of rivality between uh, Crystal and business objects. And it was actually, th their old stories actually at the time were, uh, th th there was such a big fight uh, at, the, at the time that uh, uh, in these days, business object uh, was actually a French company and they would call business object BO. And uh, because that was B for business and O for objects. And then Crystal actually at the time picked up on it and said, you know what? actually BO means bad otter. Uh, so that was a very funny story at the time. And actually at the time, Crystal was getting a lot of competition from uh, business objects. So actually they start to ship some soaps to, um, uh, to their prospects and putting on it BO. That was actually quite funny at the time. And that was a story that was reported by uh, Patrick Perrier, who's actually our CEO, who used to work for Crystal Decisions and who will be presenting after. Uh, but overall, at the end, it was not very successful for Crystal because uh, war was a success. They got purchased by uh, business objects. Uh, and after that, uh, so I think that was back in uh, 2003. Um, and after that, business object actually became uh, traded on the stock market, on the NASDAQ. And the reason that people today call business objects Bob J was of course to remove the BO name, but also because Bob J were actually, uh, this was a stock ticker of business objects at the time. And then back in uh, 2000, I think that was 2007 actually, a business object got acquired by SAP. And then after that, you had all the uh, uh, XI and up to 4.3 today that was introduced about a week ago. So basically these are the historical versions. Uh, here that's a more modern view of all the historical versions. So of course here you see uh, 3.1, so XI and typically people talk about 3.1. And then you also see 4.1, 4.2, And uh, what I wanted to talk about here as well is a lot of people don't necessarily understand what support means. Uh, or end of support, priority one support, so all these terms. Uh, so uh, I'll go through them after. Uh, just a note around 4.3 is in 4.3, as you know, is uh, flash is over. So for example, you don't have any more uh, Excelsius dashboards. Uh, so that's, if you still have that, that will be, uh, of course, an issue. In terms of maintenance, so in the past chart, you can see I was actually talking about uh, mainstream maintenance and uh, priority one support. So overall, typically mainstream maintenance lasts typically five to seven years, you know, uh, uh, typically more than less. And during that time, uh, customers have access to uh, uh, support packs, so SPs, 
patches, hot fixes, uh, et cetera, and with some bunch of new features. And typically versions tend to uh, improve, get more mature over time. Um, and basically after the end of the mainstream support, you've got a priority one support. And basically during that time, uh, of course, there's no uh, service backs on that. And when during that time, typically you're better off to be going to the new release of uh, business objects. Uh, in terms of uh, licensing, uh, so uh, one of the reasons we want to cover that is there's always a lot of questions. Well, uh, Bruno, Jason, guys, I we just don't understand uh, our licensing model. So, um, by the way, with these slides, there'll be some more details around licensing to make it you know clear. I try to keep this very high level. So over the years, there have been actually three models. All three models have actually been supported from 3.1. So uh, some people still think 3.1 was only CPU, but no, they were actually uh, the three different uh, license models at the time. They were CPU, name user license, and then concurrent base sessions. Uh, so before we go through uh, the explanations, um, you know, let's launch the first poll around which licensing model are actually you using today. Uh, so. Uh, today, are you guys using a CPU, a named user license, a concurrent model, or named in a concurrent model? Uh, so that's, uh, the, or, um, I'd be very interested to, to get your feedback on that. And of course, you know, there are pros and cons and uh, there are reasons why licensing uh, has been uh, evolving over time. And by the way, you might still see or here at CL, concurrent licenses, and actually that terms was really used in 3.1, but typically it really refers to CSBL uh, licenses. Uh, okay, let's uh, probably, uh, let's close the poll. And um, so let's see the results of the poll. So, okay, so 20% um, are in CPU, uh, which I'm not uh, super surprised. 20% are named and concurrent, uh, and that's uh, traditionally the same. And then 13% uh, named and 13% in concurrent. And actually, when you got concurrent licenses, automatically, by the way, you do have some named licenses because some people like admin, of course, they need to have their own license to be ensured that they can uh, have access to the system. Uh, and of course, you know, some people, and it's no surprise, some people don't necessarily know which licenses uh, they actually have. Um, so uh, in terms of CPU, so that was actually the oldest uh, licensing number, the, the oldest licensing uh, uh, model. So overall, in terms of CPU is, um, you know, back in the days, um, you know, CPU was the only version or the only license or the traditional Bobj licensing that was uh, being used and that has changed over time. So one important thing around uh, CPU just to make sure and just to make sure that you stay in compliance is basically Bobj uses all the CPU on the box, okay, regardless of the amount of CPUs that come with the keys. So just keep that in mind because sometimes you might have uh, keys for, let's say, two CPUs or 10 CPUs, but overall your box will be uh, 12 CPUs, and there uh, you're going to consume 12 CPUs. And one key thing is for all deployments uh, that were the ones that were uh, that had contracts before 20, 2008, if I recall, uh, VMs typically were not supported. And you can actually have some details here on a KBA and uh, at the end of uh, this presentation. Uh, then name user licenses, you know, here the advantage of it is each name user basically has got a, a guaranteed access. So of course, uh, even if you're on a concurrent base today, you do want to have some name user licenses, for example, for administrators. Uh, so there is no way, of course, that they would be on a concurrent model, you know, they need to have their own license. Um, and one interesting fact is, uh, I think it was from SP4, uh, back at the time, uh, today, one named user license has got a limit of 10 sessions. So that's something that's uh, pretty important. 
And of course, the licensing amount is really determined in uh, your contract. Uh, in terms of concurrent, so these are concurrent access uh, licenses, CAL, or concurrent sessions, CS, uh, or CSBL. So uh, the, the common uh, uh, the, the, the common word is actually uh, CSBL. Is overall here the advantage of that is um, at the time you could actually increase the amount of people that could have uh, that could be leveraging business objects. So typically five to ten users would typically be on one concurrent. So that depends of the industry, how you leverage business objects, but that was typically. Uh, a very common rule uh, on that. Uh, and of course, the numbers of sessions are limited by the numbers of concurrent uh, license. And once you've reached the CSBLs, basically there is no further uh, sessions that are allowed. Again, is uh, there are more details on this slide and then on these two, on the knowledge base and at the end of this presentation. Uh, by the way, if you got questions on that, you know, feel free to ask them in the chat box. We'll do our best to answer to them uh, at the end of the session. If, if we can't, uh, uh, we'll get back to you after. Uh, so in terms of uh, business object licensing information, so here uh, a lot of people don't necessarily know, well, Bruno, where can I get my licensing information? So uh, there are two ways to get it. One is actually you can go on the SAP uh, portal to get this information or two, which is what I'm showing here, is actually you can go in Bob J in the CMC. You just go here in license keys. And then here basically uh, you have access, you select the key and you basically get to see uh, what you have access to. Um, so today, what we found out over time is 20% of licenses uh, are never used. So, uh, and actually that can be larger, but that's a very conservative figure. So over the years, um, yeah, what we've seen, you know, is 20% of the Bob J or 20% of the licenses in Bob J deployments, um, you know, uh, don't have licenses that are used and basically there's some opportunities now with SAP to be recycling them, but the issue is a lot of people don't necessarily know what they're using and not using. And it's the same thing around content. Basically, 50% of the content actually typically is not used in the past 13 months. Of course, uh, this is smaller if the deployment is, let's say, three years old. And of course, this is uh, much wider if the deployment is more than 10 years old. So it's always interesting to uh, to get to know this type of information. Uh, so what we did with SAP here is uh, we've actually launched a scan. So this is a free scan that we do where all the information stays on site. It's the uh, information is anonymous. So there's no confidential information. Basically this scan will, is going to, uh, we're just going to run a program with you and basically it's going to show you how many licenses you're really using or not using, which, how many reports are you really uh, using or not using? It's, it's quite interesting. Uh, and at the end is most people, again, they don't really know what they have is, I always uh, actually compare Bob J to a box of chocolates. Everybody loves chocolates or I hope so. Uh, and the problem is each time you get a box of chocolate, you always wonder, mm, it's gonna be good, but what are the, ch I want to know what's in the box. I want to know what are the chocks that I don't really uh, want to eat. So uh, that's actually what 360 scan is going to give you in terms of information or 360 to find out uh, what's, um, you know, what's inside uh, your business objects. Uh, so these are a few reports that you'll get automatically out of a scan. So for example, here, you're going to get to know, for example, uh, how many licenses uh, you're actually using or not using uh, in the past six months, before six months, never. Also, how many corporate documents you have that are used, not used. Um, are you guys still using Excelsius or Explorer? You know, that might be an issue because uh, that's going to be end of life uh, by the end of the year. So, or you're going to get information about your concurrent sessions. Uh, so, uh, 
then uh, in terms of the second poll, if you guys are interested to uh, to get a, a free uh, 360 scan assessment, um, basically just select yes here and then we'll get back to you and uh, we'll provide you some keys. We'll help you to get installed. And again, is all this information stays on site. It's anonymous, so there's no uh, security issues. And um, we'll go through the results with you. And um, basically, uh, our, our, actually our COE that will be presenting the next session, we'll go through it with you and explain you what the numbers mean. And uh, typically people um, enjoy going through these reports with us because uh, we're often seen as the trusted advisor. So thanks a lot, Chris. Uh, so I see it's basically, it's a, it's pretty much a 50-50. So um, that's great. Uh, so for, I'll pass things over to uh, Jason. Um, Jason, if you can actually explain the latest around uh, Bob J or BI licensing models. Uh, Jason? Hi folks, let's get my screen up here. There we go. Hopefully everyone can see this now. Uh, that's still presenter mode, uh, Jason. It's not full screen yet. Okay. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, folks. So thank you, Bruno, for going over the history, uh, the different versions, uh, the type of licensing models. And, and what I hope to capture here is to kind of demystify uh, the, how we price business objects, how we're pricing analytics cloud, uh, and importantly, why are we doing it? So sometimes you may sit back and say, oh my goodness, it seems like you've changed your pricing model every three years. And as you'll see, we, we essentially have. Uh, but I hope to explain why we're doing this and give everyone a good understanding of what their licensing will look in the future. Um, go to the next slide. Um, of course, quick disclaimer. Um, you know, everyone has contracts, public sector group, GSA schedules, things of that nature. So, uh, you know, we're going to go over this at a high level, but obviously, you know, work with uh, your SAP counterparts or C60 if you have questions directly around uh, your contract. It will help uh, help walk you through that. And, and if you have CPUs, well, I'll touch upon that. There's some, definitely some things that we should talk about. And, and what's interesting here on this slide is, you know, as Bruno went through the different versions of, of the product, um, what's interesting here is this is kind of the history mapped to the versions of the licensing model. So um, if you look at back in the legacy business objects days, uh, we had basically business object enterprise. So this is a CPU based um, model that historically that was sold in the 2000s, you, you license the platform itself, uh, and then you would license, uh, you could buy web intelligence CPUs, you could buy dashboard manager CPUs, you could buy a mix of, uh, of those products on top of your platform CPUs. Um, so it was a, a little complex. Um, and also with CPUs, back then, you know, we were, you know, running on a, you know, at most you're gonna hit a, you know, a two CPU with two cores in a box. So uh, the server technology was uh, vastly limited. So we'd set up clusters and failovers and things of that nature to try and get the uh, performance out of the system. Um, as you can see here as well, uh, this include all the standard products. If you look at Crystal Reports and Web Intelligence, those were, the main products, uh, Explorer, which was called Polestar at the time, 
was added on back in the day, analysis for uh, OLAP, which was called Voyager. Uh, and then we came out with, I think in 2005, the uh, Excelsius, uh, which was a flash-based uh, product for uh, building dashboards. Um, what's interesting, as we went further past 2008, we, we stayed in a named user CPU model. We repackaged things as we called EQRA, uh, Enterprise Query Reporting and Analysis, uh, to create uh, different packages for our customers. Uh, and then around uh, 2009, uh, that became what we just called straight up, it was called the BI package, which include all products. And really what happened then in 2009 is, uh, instead of having kind of an a la carte menu of, uh, to buy different uh, types of services, Crystal, Webby, Dashboards, Visualization, in 2009, you basically bought a single package that gave you access to all the capabilities within business objects. Now, right around 2009, going to 2000, 2009, 2011, um, what basically happened was, was server virtualization happened, you know, VMware. Um, and Bruno made a, a very good point about business objects when he talked about CPUs, that business objects can, you know, Business Objects doesn't care that you licensed two CPUs. If, if you put Business Objects on a virtual machine that has four sockets and, and visual and can see up to 64 cores uh, on that server, it'll consume it all. It'll consume every single thing it sees. Um, and that's quite challenging when it comes to um, a pricing model. So what we did going into 2011, and we've been doing this for the last nine years, is to get customers to move off of CPUs into this concurrent session model. And that started with the BA and T BI suite in 2011 through 2014. And as you can see, that's when the additional, basically when Lumera was introduced as well, uh, into the picture from a self-service uh, discovery perspective and the concurrent sessions basically gave you server and hardware freedom. Um, also around that time in the server there was different classifications of servers A, B, C, and D uh, and that was your processor chips and um, so the, the world of trying to do things in a CPU model became very complex and then that is the big reason we moved to a concurrent session model is to give you that freedom uh, of hardware deployment. And, and now as we move forward into BOE Pro and BOE Premium um, in 2014 and 2018, um, we added additional Lumera uh, functionality, um, and but we also added uh, SAP IQ, uh, Data Integrator, uh, Power Designer, uh, and predictive analytics uh, and SAP Bora, some additional capabilities. Uh, continuing on that concurrent session model, because now what we saw starting in 2014 going forward is customers just weren't moving to server virtualization. Now, uh, you know, a little company back then called Amazon uh, got into the uh, infrastructure business. Uh, infrastructure as a service and that has exploded so now you want to now not of our customers and especially in the federal government with its cloud first policy want to move to the cloud so whether it's uh, amazon whether it's azure or whether it's google or some you know other uh, private cloud provider um, moving to concurrent sessions being out of cpus uh, where you don't get yourself into license complexity or license compliance was very important uh, through 2014 to 2018. Now, what I'm going to talk about next is what uh, our new uh, pricing model for business objects enterprise and, and business objects web, web intelligence, what these two new models are, uh, what's included in them, and, and why we've done it. So, if I go to the next slide, if you look at here's the new simplified licensing model. Uh, for SAP, so 
basically in 2019, you have two options. Now, we understand a lot of our customers uh, use web intelligence, and, and that's all they use. They, they love Webby. They've got thousands of Webby reports, Webby developers. The new 4.3 user interface is slick and looks fantastic. Uh, so we're giving you an option to have basically a Webby only licensing, so platform and web intelligence. And then if you're using Lumera or Analysis for Office or still a heavy Crystal Reports user, uh, we have the option for the business objects uh, enterprise uh, package. So now we have two simple packages, so either business objects of intelligence or business objects enterprise. So really what you need to do is choose a package. Uh, if you're not sure all what type of content's being used in the enterprise or if that content's still in use, uh, say old dashboards, things of that nature, uh, 360 scan can assist you with understanding the type of content that's in your uh, environment uh, that'll help you choose the right package, whether it's the business objects enterprise web intelligence or business objects enterprise. Uh, at that point, you choose a metric. Uh, named users is a guaranteed access. So managers, senior leaders, power users, administrators, developers would have a named user license. Uh, and concurrent session based users are people that can consume information at that point. So, and if you're not, if you have a hard time understanding what's your peak concurrent session usage, so how many concurrent sessions are in the license, I think that's very interesting. That's one of the reports that Bruno was showing that you get out of 360 Canada to tell you what your peak concurrent session, peak session basis is, uh, that'll help you pick the right number of concurrent sessions. Uh, Years ago, those were sold in blocks of 25 concurrent sessions. They're now sold in blocks of 10 concurrent sessions. So uh, you choose the package. Um, and if you look at the licensing details and say, okay, what do I get? You know, what's the difference between name user? Is there any limitations or restrictions? Uh, the answer is yes. So the big difference is, is where you see a no. Okay, and where you would need um, a concurrent session license. So if you're developing Lumera content, you need a named user. Uh, if your finance users use analysis for Office, that is still a named user license for each user because it's a desktop client. Um, same for Webby Rich Client because that's a desktop uh, product. So that would require named users. Um, and then if you look at your administration tools, all your administration tools, uh, your CMC, your business view manager, et cetera, uh, all are delivered through the name user license. So these are the big uh, differences between name users and concurrent session licensing. Uh, and just, you know, think of concurrent sessions as um, if you're, if you're, interacting with the web intelligence document and a, and a Lumera document at the same time. Uh, that's creating two sessions. Uh, so an individual user can create multiple sessions at the same time. Um, you know, that's where from an administrator's perspective, I always say, you know, be careful on your timeouts and, and how long you let people uh, keep business objects open without logging out because it's like a parking lot when you go to a sporting event or a, or a show. Uh, if the, the parking lot has a, 100 parking spaces, uh, once you get to the 101st car, uh, they're not going to be able to get into the parking lot. So you're going to need a car to leave. So it's important to uh, understand that peak session usage. Uh, those things happen normally uh, at the beginning and end of the month or a financial period uh, where people are getting uh, want or to get access to uh, information within business objects. So let's talk about the cloud pricing model. So here's the good news. The, we didn't come up with a new pricing model for cloud. We're basically using the same pricing model for on-premise as we are in cloud. It's a user and it's a concurrent session. So uh, the way the cloud pricing models work because uh, SAP Analytics Cloud uh, isn't just a business intelligence product, but it's also a planning product uh, to do business planning. Um, you have an analytics hub. So think of this as your 
uh, content space where you can put business objects reports, you can put SAC reports, you can put third party reports. So basically it's where your users can go and get access to the reports they use most frequently. And then from a product perspective, it's, it's a BI, a user or concurrent session, uh, which includes business intelligence, analysis for office, for analytics cloud, and our smart predict. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about smart predict in, in, the, in a minute, and our smart features. Um, so that's the license that you would need if you're doing traditional business intelligence. Uh, if your uh, agency or company is moving into planning, uh, there is a planning standard and a planning professional, and it's, and it's really simple. Um, planning professional users are people that design the planning models and all of the value driver trees, uh, and the planning standard is the people who input the data. So uh, if I have a budget or a headcount plan or something of that nature, and I'm a person that inputs data for my division, you're a standard user. If you're the person that actually has to build the planning model for your organization, uh, you would be a professional user. Um, so very similar to the on-premise for our analytics cloud pricing model. Now, if you look at hybrid pricing model, and I told you I was gonna answer a question of why, um, have we done this and, and changed this pricing model? And I think, you know, we have to look uh, back a little bit to look forward. So, you know, on the left is, you know, historically analytics was uh, enterprise focused. Uh, it was all based on historical data. It was static, it's linear. Uh, reports came from the top down. Uh, they were, you know, I always say what was the million dollar report it took to create, it was heavy on manpower. Uh, and they were expensive. Uh, they're traditionally created by IT, and they're operationalized for the business, and they were sent out, uh, you know, on a weekly or monthly basis. You know, starting probably in 2011, um, analytics became more self-service uh, and dynamic, where business users wanted to uh, create their own content. Uh, so basically, they wanted IT to provide access to data, uh, and they wanted more tools. Now, what's interesting going forward is that still even with self-service, a lot of insights were hidden, okay? So if you look at Forrester, Gartner, the term of uh, augmented analytics is here. That's the, the new terminology. With the vast amount of data we have access to, you know, the intelligence we can gather is, is truly unlimited. And, and now what we want from a analytics product and we want it to be automated, we want it to be predictive, we want to uh, ask questions, we want to have machine learning embedded, we want workflows um, built in our pro products uh, for we can gain additional insights. Um, you know, the beautiful thing here is that basically, you know, IT moves more to uh, providing data to information workers and information workers then can get the insights they need uh, without having to be a data science going forward. So uh, this is what they call augmented. Augmented analytics is built in the analytics cloud product. Um, and what our concept for hybrid BI uh, is simple. So, you know, what we see first, so anyone out there who voted that you are using Explorer, and you're using dashboards, the first project you should do is to move that to Analytics Cloud. That capability is an SAC, and those products are becoming in life. <coughs> um, as you can see, from a business objects on prem, analysis for office, the mirror designer, uh, scheduling and bursting. Remember, designer is different than discovery. Designer is basically dashboard manager, so it's that 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 dashboard manager engine, and that functionality and capability is built in the SAP Analytics Cloud product. And really what we see as the core uh, on-premise products is your universes, and, and Ken Coleman later tonight, today, and I hired a couple of other universes and the, the power of that universe and what you've done from a data perspective. But really what we see is that these, these three core, four core areas that's going to be in your on-premise environments. Web intelligence is crystal, 
uh, and we still people will probably uh, utilize some Lemaire discovery as well as the universes. So this becomes your hybrid landscape. And I would say from a, you know, a business objects power user, you know, this has been your job for years to create universes. The great thing is, is you know, I, yes, augmented is awesome, but there are still gonna need people to design stories, uh, to build things within uh, Analytics Cloud, to be an app, you know, application designer. So becoming educated on both products uh, is kind of the wave of the future and then developing that skill set in Analytics Cloud. Uh, from an architecture perspective, um, it's, it's interesting. What we've done is, is you can uh, connect to SAP universes uh, in two ways. So you will leverage the universe and that great work you've done. You can, in, you can connect to it live and import. A live connection directly connects the SAP universe from SAP Analytics Cloud. Query data from the SAP universe always remains behind your corporate firewall and does not enter the cloud. With the import connection, data is queried from SAP universes and imported into the Analytics Cloud product. The great news for our federal customers is SAC is now FedRAMP moderate certified. Uh, so it is available to our uh, federal civilian customers, those government re customers requiring FedRAMP moderate certification. Um, there's a number of small components uh, that you'll need to configure inside your firewall to allow this connectivity. For importing data, you'll need to install and configure both Analytics Cloud Agent for live connectivity either using a reverse proxy or using cores, which is a cross-origin resource sharing system. Now, what our customers and what we want you to have at the end of the day is a business objects on-premise environment on the right, uh, scaled to your needs of today, uh, and then take that uh, maintenance dollars you're paying for business objects, right size it, and, and start your journey and investment uh, into the Analytics Cloud products. So you'll have this hybrid licensing landscape uh, within your agency or within your enterprise. Uh, and we foresee this is how your uh, environment will look like for the foreseeable future uh, until eventually you move uh, the web intelligence content over to SAC. So Bruno, that's all I had. Um, we're right at 9.42, so we're keeping to our time so frame. We've got, um, Jason, thanks a lot. Just uh, before we go to the uh, questions, we've got a last poll, uh, which is to understand which uh, Bob J solution, uh, you know, the audience is uh, leveraging. Uh, and, of, and I think he can actually have multiple uh, answers. Uh, so um, it'll be interesting to see how many people are using Lumira, Crystal, Excelsius. I hope not too many left. And then we're also interested to know if you guys are leveraging leverage data services or not. Uh, so, and please uh, make sure that you write all your questions in the chat box. I see a couple that have arrived. We were going to have like a, just a couple minutes uh, to answer to these. So let's just close the poll and share the results. Uh, so, uh, you know, of course, 89% wow. uh, are on Webby, 39% uh, actually are leveraging Crystal. I actually, I expected that would be a little bit larger, the same the Lumira. Uh, and, if, you know, fortunately, not that many people have still got Excelsius um, because basically that's going to be end of life at the end of the year uh, due to Flash. And typically customers with Excelsius are uh, great customers to go to SAC. Um, and then it's interesting to see that uh, about 40% of you are actually leveraging uh, data services. So that's uh, that's pretty interesting. So um, I'll share my screen just to go through uh, the last uh, slides. Um, okay, uh, can you see my screen, uh, Jason? I'm still seeing mine. Okay, uh, I see my screen now. So, so overall, in terms of uh, questions, so before we go to the next session, so I see a couple of questions that I got in. 
Okay, let me uh, read them and let's do our best to answer to them. And the ones that we can't answer, we'll just answer to them uh, uh, after uh, this event. So there is one question from uh, Jaya. Uh, can we choose all three metrics for BOE licensing package? Um, so, so business objects enterprise, you have a choice of named user or concurrent session. Those are the only two choices. CPU is no longer available. Um, okay, and uh, Jaya has got another question. Could you elaborate on the public document licensing metric? How does that work in conjunction with uh, name with uh, name user licenses and concurrent? session based licenses csbl so within the um, business objects on premise so public document viewer license uh, so that is a uh, my understanding and, and I'll, I'll check janet for you that is a single uh, fee uh, so it's a one it's to be able to expose uh, those documents in a public uh, website or, or within some type of uh, public network uh, that you may have and Jeff, we haven't addressed all your question. Just either put something back in the chat box or actually myself or Don will uh, send you an email. And if there, if you need more details, we'll be more than happy to try to help you. And We've got the actually- I think it is, she's got, you got my phone number too, so you can give me a call. Uh, we've got a question from uh, Singram as well. So, um, uh, by the way, Singram is, you know, 4.3 uh, is actually was out about a week ago. So uh, Singram is asking, we presently have 4.2 SP4 in prod with 25 uh, named user licenses. If I install 4.3 on test requesting the new license keys, will I lose the existing licenses for 4.2 SP4 in prod? No, you, you should not. Um, SAP, uh, if you're depending upon when you acquired business objects, um, and if, if it's post-2008, uh, SAP does not charge for test and development environments, uh, and you have the ability to run simultaneously in both versions uh, while you're doing an upgrade. And so you should be able to download 4.3 onto your test environment without losing uh, any licenses that are current on your production version. And I think to get the licenses for 4.3, as long that he's up to date in terms of maintenance, Jason, I think is uh, Singram just needs to uh, ask uh, SAP basically to get keys for 4.3. Is that correct? Correct. And that would be on the uh, software download center. And if you're the S user, uh, you would have access to download those keys on the software download center. Uh, if you do not have that access, uh, uh, send us an email or create a support ticket uh, for you can get access to do so. Okay, I see two more questions. Uh, and uh, before we go is one is uh, you guys were talking about 360 scan. This is a question from Bob. And how long is uh, does 360 scan take uh, to run? Uh, so typically on that is we say that 360 scan will run in about an hour. It can be sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. We actually did a scan this week in Germany. It took like 20 minutes. And another one uh, locally, I think about a week ago, and it took like 45 minutes. But in reality, it really depends uh, of the size of your environment. So there is no rule of thumb on that. But that typically we say it's going to last about an hour. And then the last question is, uh, uh, is um, what type of information is 360 scan showing? Does it show any confidential information? So no, 360 scan will not show any confidential information. It's all anonymized. So it's just going to show you actually information around uh, your licenses, what you're using, not using in terms of documents. So it's not going to display any username or uh, anything like that. And you can actually decide uh, um, yeah, um, you can actually uh, decide what to do with uh, this information. Uh, 